thank you, uh, Richard and Tim and Alexandra for being here tonight for this discussion. And thank you to all of the people who've tuned in to learn more about this very unfortunate turn of events that the CAQ has decided to impose upon us by withdrawing their commitment to the uh, expansion of Dawson College, uh, the, the, um, the project which had been underway and had had, had money uh, earmarked for it for a number of years. We're going to delve into the intricacy of, uh, of all of these decisions. And uh, I'm very, very lucky that uh, it's not just me talking tonight because uh, we've got experts here. Um, Richard Fillion is the former director general of uh, Dawson College. Uh, so the, the, the person that was at the head of the institution until his retirement very recently. Tim Miller uh, has been involved, is faculty, and has been involved deeply in the development of this particular project. And it's going to give us a little bit more insight as to what the project was meant to do and um, what we have lost by having this project shelved by the CAQ government. And Alexandra Cordona is the current president of the Dawson Student Union, who's going to give us a little bit of an insight into how the students who are currently enrolled at Dawson feel about this, uh, about this turn of events and uh, what they may do going forward uh, to make sure that their voices are heard uh, and that the CAQ government registers uh, that uh, the actions that they've undertaken are not, going to, are not sitting well with the students and faculty and administration at Dawson College. So we're going to start off by getting some more information and we're going to get it right from the sources. And I want to start by turning the mic over to Rajal uh, to find out a little bit more about the context of the cancellation of the Dawson College expansion. Um, but to understand the, the depth of this file, let's start by asking the first question, which is what exactly were the plans for the expansion? When were they start, started? And, and, uh, and when, where were we in this project when the uh, rug was pulled out uh, from the Dawson community? Rajal? Yes. Well, good afternoon, Matt. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Tim and Alexandra and uh, all those who are joining us for this uh, webinar. Bonsoir tout le monde. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to try to do a long story short because this project has started uh, a while ago. It has been in the work for now more than 10, uh, seven years uh, and even before. Uh, it started, formally it started to my, to my memory uh, around 2014, when it was uh, acknowledged that Dawson uh, was suffering from a space deficit uh, that was averaging 10,000 square meters. And it is important to understand at this point in time that this space deficit was, uh, was related not so much to the real uh, uh, student population that was an, enrolled at Dawson, let's say in 2014, it was based on the uh, uh, the enrollment capacity that Dawson had, had 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 been given by the by the Ministry of Education in 1998, which was around 70 7100. Okay, uh, in 2014, Dawson had a, about 76,000 students. Sorry, is it seventy six thousand? Seventy six hundred. Okay. I, I, I went to Dawson. I, remember being crowded. I, I had I had always crowded. issue with numbers. No problem. <laughs> Comes to English. Okay. So uh, the fact is that okay, and it is important to realize that the fact is that it's not because Dawson was overcrowded. It was because Dawson was lacking the space that he would have been allowed to get following the norms and the regulation that the ministry had set for, the, for every single college into the network, okay? And it is important because, you know, we have to abide by a certain framework when, when decision has, has to be taken, when, when you have, uh, you're entitled to get that much uh, 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 square meters, to deliver activities to your students in, in, in all fairness with others in other part of the uh, network, okay? So just so we're clear, this wasn't a case where Dawson was, uh, you know, being very ambitious and saying, look, we can no. we have so many more students here if we just build no. more buildings and, and, and no. you know, this was- Okay, this was a, until, uh, until 2010, Dawson had, 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 a, had a, 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 a,
a, a mark not to go beyond 7,500,000 uh, because we knew that we were tight in our space. Mm -hmm. we, we could see how the students were, were, were jam-packed in, 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 in every single part of the college. And so, in the context of saying, look, we're going to have but, total 7,500 people here, there's a formula. That's it. And but in, in, but in, in 2010 11, we were asked by the then Minister of Education if we could accommodate more students because there was a demand for college education in Montreal. And French colleges was were part of the of the of the decision to bring more students on board because the, there was uh, 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 demand for that coming from students. Okay? So, so it, it it is how Dawson got close to seventy nine hundred where we stand since. Okay, on a yearly basis. So, so um, obviously, when we started this uh, whole process with the minister, okay, we had to work very diligently and very thoroughly to really document and validate which kind of space we're missing. And obviously there was uh, a major issue was a, a space that the, it should be allocated for student life at the college, okay? A space that uh, should be allocated for, for uh, physical education, uh, gymnasium, okay? We are, we're short of, a, I don't remember, uh, top of my head, 200, uh, 2,000 square meters in, in, in uh, physical education facilities, yep. uh, offices, offices for teachers, officers for employees, classrooms, labs. So it was clear that uh, uh, we were we we were down the norm. And uh, I told the 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 the, the minister then we we want to be treated fairly, yeah. uh, in in total uh, uh, equity with the with the network. So uh, in two thousand eighteen, okay. The project went through an important phase when the government uh, uh, decided to uh, give way to a dossier d'opportunité, which is uh, the, the the formal stage where you have to study every single options that you may have to find a solution to your problem, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it has to be done with the SQE, La Société Québécoise des Infrastructures, which is a big structure in, uh, for the Quebec government. It's a mm -hmm. Son bras armé pour l'immobilier, c'est ce que vous comprenez. So, uh, this dossier d'opportunité uh, was completed last year in June 2021, and it, it, it had recommended an option among others. Okay. So, Me just so we, as, before we move to, to, uh, to Tim uh, to, to talk a little bit okay. more about the specific uh, program that were intended to, to go into the expansion, let me ask you this just, you know, very very broad, uh, you know, simple sort of uh, uh, encapsulation. Um, when did the, so the plan started as early as before 2010. At what point did, did the project get approved and some money get put into this? Um, and who, who approved it? I mean, was this something that, that well, it, sort of it, sitting it, in a, it, we don't know status it's, for a long time? It's, 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 a, it's a governmental decree. Okay. It has to be had by the, by the Conseil des Ministres. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, money comes with that. Uh, the, there's a couple of million dollars that were uh, given to uh, to sustain the process and to hire people, architects, uh, consultant, uh, engineers, uh, uh, all kind of uh, and 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 a lot of work have been have been uh, done uh, pro bono by 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 our employees at the college too. And uh, so into uh, in in in. Uh, when it goes to that step, okay, it has to lead to what they call a business case. When you get to the point where the deal has been granted and has been accepted, okay, it goes to the dossier d'affaires and then you work on the real project, uh, you know, set the plans and buy the all, everything you need to buy, lands and all that. So, okay. All right. So, uh, so, uh, so, so there's so, some money that's so, been put into this project to this point. Right, like this wasn't like okay. So just, just so we have a clear idea of this, somewhere so, between '97 uh, and 2010, it becomes clear something needs to be done. Some money is put into it. How much money 
are we talking about up to today? Say, uh, I would say on top of my head, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm I, if I'm uh, uh, putting everything together, I would say it's 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 not far five million dollars. So five million dollars of taxpayer money has already been spent on this project yeah. to get it to where it is today. Uh, yeah. Of and course. that, what happens to the money that's been spent? Now we just like the, the, the <laughs> well, you know, you've got to ask, uh, you've got to ask the government. We won't pay for that. It's 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 grants that are coming. It's uh, our own resources that we have been uh, pouring into that over the last five years. Uh, 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 Billies for teachers, uh, additional uh, 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 employees, uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, obviously, when we heard that uh, the government had decided to pull the plug on the project, uh, we were not only uh, disappointed; we were uh, we were we were kind of upset. We were we were uh, angry. Actually, so it doesn't make last sense. Question before we, we turn to Tim, um, just so everybody is on the same page here, did the government tell us exactly why? This project yes. being canceled. Why, why is this project after uh, well, what is it? Fifteen yeah. years of of, of pre plan of planning and pre planning. Five million dollars. God knows how many man hours. Getting everyone's expectations up. Why did they pull the plug now? Well, the the the, the official explanation that had been provided by the premier himself through uh, through a press conference that uh, that uh, that uh, that they were holding on COVID. A journalist asked him, uh, "Why, why, why have you decided? Uh, why your minister of higher education uh, had had decided to uh, uh, to inform Dawson that the that the project was canceled?" Yes. Uh, he had to answer that, "Well, you know, there's a there's a, so many needs that are knocking at the doors because there will be a a, a blurb, a, a bump." into the uh, uh, request for uh, college education, mainly in the Montreal uh, area. And uh, there will be needs for uh, uh, a lot of colleges to, uh, in, uh, to, to augment their, their, their square meters, their, their, uh, their superficie. And um, he said uh, very bluntly, uh, we had to prioritize the French colleges to the detriment of the Dawson project and the others project that are in the pipeline coming from the other English colleges. So uh, it, it's a big, uh, it's a big blast it's unbelievable. to the, so, so to, to the, to these institutions. So just for, so we're clear on this projects are underway, money's been committed, millions of dollars have been spent. This thing is yeah. further advanced than yeah, any but, other project, if I understand correctly. Yeah, the demographics haven't significantly changed. Everybody knew okay. that there's a bump coming of, of students who are working their well, way through the education system. You know, but then the, the government realizes that they have bigger needs and they decide to cancel the project and, that it would be the easiest to finish. And twice, and twice before that, the government had uh, included the Dawson project within a priority list uh, related to uh, la relance de l'économie post covid blah 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 and uh, uh, so so obviously that was a a, a volte face as we say i don't know how no. we uh, what what would be a slap in the face uh, quoi a slap in the face uh, well well or no, a volte face. it was a, a, a it was a tour sur 180 degrés on about face Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and so, but the real the real thing the real thing, Matt, and all those yeah. who are listening, is that it's it's clear that they had used the the uh, the argument of uh, too many needs and we have to prioritize. But the real story is that uh, when when it had been noted that Dawson was uh, in the books of the government, there was uh, there has been a, a, a big big huge crusade from the nationalistic fringe of Quebec society to uh, to to uh, to ask for 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 uh, a change in in the plans for to to ask for the government to uh, so th there was a lot of pressure and we know that they're going soon have an election so they had to prepare no. the ground not to be pressed by this dossier and they decided to say okay we're gonna 
And they're doing a similar thing with Bill 96 now. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a really a, a very comprehensive overview of where we have been and where we are presently. But now I'd like to I'd turn to Tim, uh, who'd been working intimately in this project. And Tim, maybe perhaps you could start off by telling us a little bit about what it is you do and what your role in this project was. And then tell us a little bit about how this project had actually provided some solutions to problems that were uh, created by the pandemic, which of course no one saw coming, but lucky for us, we have an answer ready to go where we did before the CAQ decided to pull the plug. So no problem. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Um, so my name is Tim. I'm a faculty member with the physiotherapy technology department at Dawson. So I'm one part of a, a bigger group of faculty and staff that are working on this project. We've been heavily implicated for the past four years, dedicating lots of time to develop uh, the, the, the building, design the building and work with the architects and engineers to design the first phase of this building, as well as look at the pedagogy uh, of getting our students to work together. So part of this group of faculty uh, are other um, programs such as radiation oncology, diagnostic imaging, biomedical laboratory technology, and so on. So these are all the medical technology programs. And as faculty, we're working together to get our students to work together because the research demonstrates that when our students work together, the quality of care for the patient they all treat at the end of the day increases. And so we're spending lots of time designing different things all the while working with the architects and engineers to design this building and very quickly concluding that a lot of what we're thinking about of doing, we need this tailored space to do so. Without this tailored space, we won't be able to provide the students with this type of training to help the healthcare system uh, upon graduation. So that's sort of where we're at at this point. Uh, and obviously with the news that we received like everybody in the past few weeks, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult place to be in this and right now because we're trying to do the best we can with the information that we have, but it's clear that we won't get to the, to the level that we were planning to get to without this tailored space. So if I read you correctly, Tim, the, the, the suggestion that have been, have been offered in a somewhat flippant manner, uh, in my opinion, by the, uh, the Minister of Education that Dawson can just rent some space does that not suit? Can we not do that? Or is that, you know? Uh... Absolutely not. In regards to what we're trying to do as a group of faculty across these disciplines, it's very clear that we can't be in different buildings. So right now, the space that we've rented, there are two of these disciplines that are in that space. And, you know, we can't cross paths. We, the students, the, the staff that are all working together for this, this greater and bigger thing of interprofessional education, this collaborative process, we can't do that if we're in different and separate buildings. And the space that you need to be able to do this doesn't just mean the laboratory space or the classroom space. It's actually the collaborative space outside the classroom that the students, where the students get to mingle. The students can't mingle in the school right now, given the space constraints that we have. And so we can't have our students get to know each other and have you know a meal together uh, in order to, to you know like get to know each other so that by the mm -hmm. time they hit the workforce, they'll have a better understanding of who they are and, and again, provide better healthcare for, for Quebec. So if I remember correctly, in addition to student space in this, in this uh, facility and, uh, and specialized laboratory and, uh, and health sciences space, there was some discussion of something that was uh, 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 available to the public as well. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Correct. So it's clear that uh, all of us have our internship and clinical education courses as part of our training, and we are using the network at this point for those types of courses. But over the years, it was clear that we'd be able to host a lot of these uh, internship and clinical education courses within a space within school. We don't have this space right now. We can't offer this to the public at the given moment, but this new campus would be able to provide the, the school and therefore the public with these services. So we're talking about services that people are waiting you know, months to, to be able to, to receive. So whether it's a blood test or simply getting your blood pressure checked or a physical, uh, being able to get uh, uh, an x-ray or an ultrasound or you know, physiotherapy treatment for a, a, pa a pain that you've had for a long period of time, uh, being able to see a social service worker, being able to get, you know, a specimen tested with our biomedical laboratory technology program. These are the services we'd be able to provide as soon as we take occupancy in this space. So it's not a long-term investment. It's an immediate payback that you'd be able to pr provide Quebec society with these services uh, upon, again, upon us entering the, the building. If I may, if yeah, I may sure, please, go ahead. interject, Matt, and, and this is an aspect of the project that is 
uh, quite uh, quite major because uh, you know uh, over years we have noticed that it's becoming more and more uh, difficult, uh, harder and harder every year for our faculty uh, to find uh, uh, places for staff in the clinical milieu. Uh, so the fact that uh, this clinic that would that 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 will be I'm still I'm, I'm I still believe that it's going to take place I don't know in which format yet but uh, we're working on it <laughs> well, one way or another uh, uh, the, 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 it, it creates something that is that would be very relevant not only for the population it's, it, itself from the environment and we know that this Close Dawson, there's a lot of need, yeah. uh, socio-sanitaire, as I would say, huh? and uh, uh, it, it would it would give also our 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 uh, students a real hands-on life experience, which so, always. Good. Yeah. So so far in our discussions, that's right, and we haven't even gotten to the president of the student union yet. We've already talked about the enormous amount of money that was which already committed based on commitments from the government. We've talked about the, the fact that this project was supposed to bring Dawson's space up to the, to, you know, to where it's supposed to be according to ministry standards, not expanding, just getting rid of the deficit. We've talked about the types of educational opportunities that would have been available in this specialized building and setting and the services that would have been available to the to the, the members of the public. So this isn't just a question of, uh, you know, students and, and, and faculty within their four walls doing what they do, but th this is gonna have, it would have had an immediate uh, impact on a, on a very uh, stretched uh, healthcare system, which has been, you know, as, as we all know, is depleted of workers and of resources because of the pandemic. All of those things are things in its favor. And yet, even with all of that uh, going in its favor, uh, the government has decided to withdraw its commitment and put everything on ice because unfortunately um, the language of instruction is not the one that the, uh, the CAQ and their supporters uh, prefer. Unbelievably disappointing. Tim, before we turn to the president to hear a little bit about the impact that this decision is having on the students, is there anything else that the public should know about the, the incredible work that you and your team have been doing to this, this point? Um, you know, in, in, in terms of, of how uh, this, the, the, the room, withdrawal of the commitment for funds for this project are having an immediate impact on how you and your colleagues do your job? So a lot of the stuff we're working on is stuff that we can Im implement now, but we've always had this, this vision of the space that we can have where we can implement the full version of what we're trying to do. So in the short term, since hearing the news, we've been trying our best to keep the things going that we're doing with the current students. But the, the future of what we're trying to do is really at jeopardy because a lot of what we've spent the time doing is when we get into the new building, we'll be able to do this. And at this point, we'll have to rejig a lot of what, we're, what we've designed and what we've looked at. And so I think it's important for the population to know that the full-fledged version of what we're trying to do and therefore the full-fledged benefit of what we're trying to do won't be able to be achieved at that point. And I think if there's one more thing to add here just to jump in a little bit on that pandemic spin i think it's super critical you hinted at it that there's this mass shortage of, of people in this industry in this healthcare industry and i think what this building was going to do was going to attract young students into these professions and if there's one thing that we can count on is graduating all of these students which we would graduate about 250 students into the workforce every single year and that would be able to alleviate the shortage of this sector so it's extremely surprising that when you look at this project the way it is right now and the way that it's designed, that it's no longer being supported, having been supported for so long, that it's changed in its support immediately and drastically, given how much impact, positive impact it would have immediately and long term for, for Quebec. It's such a shame. And um, it's it, important to say that the services would have been provided in both languages. Our nurses, our uh, technicians in physiotherapy, uh, they serve uh, uh, public uh, languages. So the, the language is not an issue, shouldn't be an issue, but for this government, uh, it doesn't seem that, <laughs> that this is the case. That's a really important point. I'm, I'm glad that you, that you mentioned that. Um, turning now to, to Alexandra, uh, as, as a representative of the student union, tell us, first of all, 
perhaps you can give us a little picture of like who are the students at Dawson? Well, from what communities do they come, and what are they? What is it that they are are doing while they're studying at Dawson, and where do they? You know, what, what, how does the the removal of a of, of this project as a, a as a, a commitment by the government affect the students who are at Dawson today? Is this the sort of thing where everybody would kind of just shrug it off and keep going about their thing, or is, is there is there an impact that this is really uh, being felt? Well, Dawson students are um, of all backgrounds. Uh, so this is um, this was the first ever um, English language college in the network. Um, this remains, uh, you know, an important institution overall, but also in terms of uh, being the most uh, competitive um, for admissions um, across the province. So. Uh, naturally, when when the demand is is so high and um, uh, it, it's such an attractive institution for for good reason for ambitious students for students who are looking for innovative um, and interesting programs um, pedagogy, um, it also attracts a, a a large a large mix of demographics. Um, so that's one thing that really. From the Dawson student perspective, is really jarring about the narrative by um, the CAQ government because they they refer very openly to um, francophone anglophone institutions, and by extension, they they promote this idea that there's a, a division and a, and a large distinction between the the francophone and anglophone student and their needs. Um, when in fact the the average Dawson student is um, has uh, both grasp of English and French, uh, as well as of other languages, um, they are uh, well. You know, they might have many different types of interests, many different um, intersections in their background. Um, but overall, when it comes to the language issue, especially the binary language issue, as it's being promoted by the CAT government, um, in practice, that's just not the lived experience of, of Dawson students. Um, you'll hear French on campus, of course you'll hear English on campus as the primary language of instruction. That does not um, undermine the, the, the use of the French language on campus. Um, it certainly does not um, impact the cultural identity, the cultural fabric of the individuals of the community. Um, I've said it before as president of the student union that Dawson is a Quebecois institution, which, you know, for <laughs> typically is not the type of redundant statement that needs to be said, but for Dawson and for Dawson students, it sometimes needs to be said, we're a Quebecois institution, we're Quebecois students. Um, so the, it, in practice, it's very difficult to be um, an ambitious student going to a school, going to a college, um, supposedly in a, in a system of, of public um, higher education and to, um, be in a program that you work so hard to be admitted to, and ultimately, there's been more space deficit um, at Dawson than you know is older than our own lifetime. Like the space deficit, the ten thousand square meter square meters lacking at Dawson, that space has existed longer, or that issue has existed longer than the age of the most current Dawson students, the current cohort. I, I can actually tell you that as I'm one of your predecessors, I was myself once. The Dawson Student Union president back before the turn of the century, and uh, in 1997, when I left that office, uh, the space deficit, deficit existed at that time. And here we are, 25 years later, and I'm I regret that you are suffering from the same space deficit that I did when I was a student. And I hope that we are not going to be looking at another 25 years before it's fixed, because uh, that's an awfully long time for everybody to be suffering. So, in that respect, can you tell us a little bit about what? Um, What's the overcrowding like? Physically, the overcrowding is, I mean, you know, sometimes we hear these examples, they, they sound rather quotable, but the sad truth is that they're very real. So for example, it's, it's easy to say, well, five or six teachers share the same office and you go, oh yeah, well, that's quite the visual, isn't it? Um, no, but in reality, it is the norm <laughs> at Dawson. Um, imagine you're a student wanting to meet your teacher during office hours. Well, unfortunately, you're not guaranteed, you know, a confidential, a quiet, a calm space. Um, you're likely to have, you know, what should be, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations with your teachers, um, often in spaces shared with other teachers or students, not because, you know, the community doesn't um, 
uh, not because there's a lack of, you know, courteousness on campus, just that's unfortunately we have to make do with the space. Um, it's, you know, it touched, we touched a bit on student life, not having the space for um, to be able to meet the demands of clubs. And again, that's sure that's purely a, a space issue. Um, student life, um, the, the students, you know, the demand is there, the, you know, we have the operational uh, ability just to do fun things for students, but how is that possible when um, we just uh, don't have the space to accommodate them? And of course, extra considerations of COVID have made that so much more um, challenging. What was previously just a little bit inconvenient in terms of lack of operational space became, and, and, and truly inconvenient in the way that students, you know, lack space to study, that's just not acceptable. As we know, that's not even acceptable for the government standards. Um, but again, post, you know, coming back to campus during the pandemic, that became uh, a, a serious uh, a safety and security issue. For sure. So uh, before we, we move to the next segment, um, let me ask you this. Um, we have a fairly well-placed, famous Dawson graduate in the CAQ government. Christopher Skeet, who is responsible for the, uh, the, sec the interaction with, the, with uh, the English language community, is one of the graduates of Dawson College. So he has sat where you sit. And for some reason, he seems to have forgotten what that's like. If we were, if you had a chance to speak directly to Christopher Skeet, what would you tell him? I mean, I would really ask, you know, um, the, on a frank note, the, I mean, the decision was, was made for him to attend Dawson. There was obviously a level of attraction there. Uh, I, I don't know that I can speak to um, what that looked like a few decades ago versus now, but um, Dawson- He was there after I was, so it's, it's not that long ago. Dawson's mission has remained the same, surely. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's remained the, the same and it's, and it's um, in its importance in, in Quebec society. And, um, and I think that that's, that's, that has to be recognized by a graduate. Um, and I think that, I think that there, there is, um, certainly it would be, it would be interesting for, for to hear that person explain to Dawson students, um, why they think that times have changed. Um, mm -hmm. That's not the perspective of, of students, of course, but that'd be interesting to hear. Before we go to, uh, to opening the, the floor to questions, um, you know, I, I've asked uh, uh, Alexandra to tell us a little bit about how Dawson students are feeling. Uh, uh, Richard, Tim, would you like to share your impressions from your colleagues or former colleagues about how the administration and how the faculty are feeling about this, uh, this turn of events? Uh, Tim, do you want to go first? So I can speak on behalf of the group, but I think I can also speak on behalf of, of everybody. Uh, all faculty that we're moving into 2022. We've just come out of a, a very interesting way of teaching. And all of us had to do a deep reflect because we had to pivot to, to virtual. And it forced a big shift in how we look at teaching. And moving forward, it's it's a, it's a promise it, or it's promising where we can go. And in order to, to, to go where a lot of us are thinking we need to go, we need space. Like we can't evolve into the next gen generation of teaching without the adequate space that we deserve to have and that the students deserve to have. So any idea that passionate teacher comes up with immediately doesn't get denied, but there's no solution for that idea. So we have to find ways around there. And we've been doing that for 25 years. Like at what point can we do what we're supposed to do and teach these students and have them enter into the world with better, uh, adequate, up-to-date things that they need in order to achieve what they signed up for, which is to attend a CJEP in Quebec and have equal treatment, have equal access. It, it baffles my mind. And it, as you can see, I'm getting, getting fired up about it because we can't do the things that we dream. We think about it all the time. What can I do with my students? What can I do different with my students? Oh, I can't do that. There's no space. Oh, I can't do that. There's no space. Like enough is enough. Thank you, Tim. And Michelle, uh, uh, maybe uh, I will add my... Uh editorial uh, statement uh, if I if I may uh, you know it, it is sad and it is sh a shame to see that what I consider as being one of, of the most proeminent institution in Quebec you know both 
for a material uh, reason and, and I would say intellectual reason is now uh, the target of such uh, 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 campaign. Um, it, it's sad to see that we're not acknowledging what Dawson and other English colleges had given to Quebec society over the last 50 years. And it's sad to see that, you know, it is done under the argument that by limiting access to non-anglophone, ayant droit, to these institutions, you know, they're giving the English, they're doing the English community a favor, okay? They're giving back their institute these institutions to the English community. So the English community shouldn't be complaining about what's going on. Because you know the, the calculus that is done with all the changes that they're, they're about to bring with Bill 96 to English colleges, the functioning, the norms, the rules, the 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 the, the requirements to graduate from an English college okay, will be so different that it will discourage non-Anglophone to get into French uh, English colleges. So with time, the student population, the student enrollment will shrink, you know? So what is the need for additional space? Well, the, I, I'm gonna- uh, let, This let is the that. reasoning behind that. To, okay. to, let this me ask, is vicious. Let me ask one last question on that on that line of the three of you before we open it to uh, questions. Excuse me. <laughs> all, all of you have been working, living, and breathing Dawson College for some time. In your in your time as a student, or as a faculty member, as an administrator, how many francophone students who have opted to come to Dawson have you met who have forgotten how to speak French and lost their identity? I mean, there must be dozens, if not hundreds. No, I mean this is a major problem, right? What well, I, how many have how many have lost their identity and became anglophone? I, I may yeah, that's right. Isn't that, the that's, that's the big concern the CAQ has. Oh, or we have to correct. stop the anglophones from no. francophones and non and non anglophones to come to Dawson uh, and other English schools. They lose their identity. It's uh, attacking the French language. So surely this must be a major problem within the community. Is it not? I don't think that's an epidemic at Dawson, but what I do think um, happens frequently um to um you know everyone's uh surprise is that as richard hinted that anglophones are incentivized to pursue higher education and then that's a pathway into sometimes into, into the workforce which is in french but sometimes that's in um other programs of higher education undergraduate graduate studies and so on in french that we see and yes that's anecdotal um but speaking of what do we the anecdotally, I, I can promise you that I see every single year Dawson students going to French University, to law in French, to medicine in French, all types of different programs, HSC, so on and so forth. Um, sometimes to France, I, I just, that that is maybe the epidemic, not so much the other way around. Michelle, last word on this before we open to the, pop, the, to the floor? To me? Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think, I think, I think it's 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 pretty damn clear, you know, that uh, the, the 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 you know in 1969, Matt, okay, there was a fight that was uh, done in Quebec called Miguel Francais, probably, mm -hmm. huh? For the reason, okay, there was a, a whole movement that were claiming for Miguel Francais where 25 years or so, uh, even more, uh, after 69, we're, we're 50 years almost, and more. And now it's Cégep Francais. <laughs> Le cri de ralliement, okay, it's Cégep Francais. So you saw all, these ba all this battle on Bill 101 and blah, blah, blah. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's not over, okay? Uh, they say no now, but <laughs> no, they... Uh, it, it's it's a, it's a it's a never-ending fight 
And this time, I think what is uh, really uh, bothersome, what is troubling for me, is that it's done under a uh, uh, political argument that are that that are just aiming at increasing the divide between French and Anglo in Quebec. And that is unacceptable to me. No, that many of us do Comprenez-moi bien, hein? je suis un francophone et je vais demeurer jusqu'à mon dernier souffle. Hein? Mais, mais, mais euh, je ne peux accepter que l'on que l'on que l'on traite euh, notre, notre Québec comme ça. C'est 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 inacceptable, inacceptable. Mais qu'est-ce que vous voulez, c'est la politique. Well, that's the, 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 I mean, yes. Exactly. Now, on that note, I'd like to turn this uh, webinar to the to the floor, um, and I invite folks who have questions that they would like to ask to put them in the Q and A. Um, uh, if you are having trouble doing that, you can look at the bottom of your screen and look for the Q and A uh, button. Um, uh, and please feel free to to type out a question, and we're going to uh, put it to. If you have someone specific on the panel you'd like to ask it of, please let me know who that is. And um, and let's uh, let's answer the questions of uh, other people. Uh, we have we're just waiting for some questions to come in. I have a good question here, Matt. Yeah. What did Dawson ever ever to do to Pascal Birubé? You know, Pascal Birubé is the MNE from Matan Metapedia, who's yep. been, who's been very vocal about Bill 101 at the at the college level. The problem the problem is that. They don't know. They, they, all those who are who are uh, uh, riding the 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 horse of the Défense du Français, okay? They never experienced what it is to be in a college like Dawson, you know. And they and they build themselves a, a make believe that says basically, well, you know, because Dawson is big, all the others are suffering. Mm -hmm. They're taking up the money that should be allocated to these colleges, which is a total, total uh, uh, inexactitude. It's mm -hmm. not true. It's a narrative that has been created. And uh, La, La CAC is uh, happily playing into that narrative. <laughs> and we're the, the bad guys of the story. Well, this uh, flows well into a question from Tom, who writes, um, and I suppose this is directed to uh, to uh, Madam President, uh, is the student population intending on speaking up publicly? The CAQ yields to public pressure. Uh, I might add, not just the CAQ, those, those of us who recall 10 years ago, the uh, the the um, the Printemps uh, Arable, uh, the square, Red Square movement realized that, that students, when um, motiv uh, mobilized, can have a huge uh, voice and sometimes they launch the careers of certain politicians, like uh, the current leader of the uh, of the Quebec Solidaire. So, uh, Madam President, any plans to um, for the students to speak up? Yes, absolutely. So um, plans have been ramping up on the side of students. Um, this did come as a shock to the student population, um, primarily because it came as a shock even to the Dawson administration. And, and so, um, you'll appreciate that if it was a shock for the administration, then the student body wasn't ready for that announcement either. Um, but in the last two weeks that um, since this bombshell announcement um, has been released, um, we've been working to organize. At this time, we have a petition live. Um, so that is public. Um, and we are looking to spread that beyond just the Dawson community. Um, so you can find that um, either on any of the Dawson Student Union or the Dawson College official social media pages. Um, also check the official Dawson College website as well. Um, if you are outside of the community, if you're already a part of the community, please do check all of your um, internal we can, we, can, uh, we can ask our, uh, our sports staff here, uh, Josh or, or Sarah, to put the uh, link to that in the, um, in the chat so that everybody can access it that way as well. Amazing. So that's that's petition sponsored by the student union, um, and uh, it will be presented to the national assembly. Um, there's more coming up. So tomorrow there'll be uh, many promotions on campus. Um, we'll be meeting with some key oh, figures. 
Oh. Kim's added the uh, the, uh, the the um, the uh, petition uh, to us hosts and panelists. I'm going to just make sure everybody can see it as well. Uh, sorry, please continue. No, I hope that answers the question for the time being. That's um, that's uh, what currently happening this week. Um, more information is, is of course to come. Please um, stay tuned to any of the Dawson College or Dawson Student Union social media pages for more updates. Um, please do sign uh, the petition. It's you know this this petition is it's officially um, sponsored not by the, just by the student union but also um, by uh, Jennifer McMaroon's office um, for Westmount St. Louis. Um, and it will be presented to the to the National Assembly. So this is a key part of, of mobilizing, but there'll be more updates to come. Thanks for the question. Good news. Thank you for saying so. Um, we've got a question here concerning, and this is not directed to anyone in particular, but perhaps uh, each of you could take a, a crack at it from your point of view. Um, Linda asks, has this information, the steps that we've been talking about here, the whole backstory on this, has it been shared with the public uh, through the, the Francophone media? Uh, it seems as though perhaps the details are not well known uh, by reporters or news agencies on the, uh, the Francophone side of things. And I wonder if either the faculty through its union, uh, the Dawson Student Union, or the administration has uh, had the opportunity to share these details uh, with our friends in the Francophone press. I'll throw that to everybody. Well, I can answer from, from what I know from, from, from what I had seen while I was at Dawson and you know, because it's clear that uh, the battle is raging on the French side of the uh, of the electoral uh, checker, I would say. Uh, and and uh, you know, we got to see that uh, l'Empire Québécois, all right? Okay, l'Empire Québécois, which is uh, in 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 uh, control of media in the French uh, side. Uh, is clearly at taken side against uh, the project. Uh, Le Devoir, same. Okay, there's only La Presse with the uh, regular newspaper kind of uh, media that uh, has tried to uh, provide a more uh, nuance uh, history or coverage, I would say. Um, well, the thing is that I would I would still believe that there's a, a, a quite a majority of the French population that if if they would be given the full story that they will keep uh, supporting Dawson. Mm -hmm. It's it's it, but how can we? reach out to this community when you know so much is controlled by 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 corporations that are standing against but that is a great question that we'll have to leave hanging there because i i, I myself don't have an answer unless tim do you have an answer on that one or for that matter um, any insight on uh, what your uh, colleagues may be doing to, to address the issue uh, through the french media so we've done what we can to get the word out there, obviously, and and uh, what we're working on as a group of faculty is we have lots of, we're calling them partners um, within the network, especially the healthcare network, obviously, we work a lot with these clinical sites, hospitals, uh, long-term care centers, CHSLDs, et cetera, so we work a lot with them, so we're, our next step as a group of faculty are to reach out to them, uh, which cover a, a grand scheme of, of different areas of the city and areas of the province, so um, the hope maybe through that angle is to be able to get some of these partners to, and obviously get all of them to be able to support what we're trying to do and reverse the decision uh, that's on the table. So maybe through that angle, we'll be able to get uh, some of the, the, the word out there in all the media to be able to sort of drum up some interest and some support from, uh, from the French sector, for sure. Great. And um, uh, Alexandra, in terms of your interactions with uh, both the Francophone Press and uh, your colleagues in the French uh, Cégep Network. What do they have to say about this? I mean, I think there's, um, there's, there's a nervousness on the, on the part of students. Um, this is like large, this is effectively a larger issue than Dawson. It has to do with the upcoming elections. Um, I think there is also an awareness, whether explicit or not, that 
this is also to be made an example of. There's a little bit of a scapegoat situation happening here. And the other institutions are not necessarily, you know, they, they, they're wise to that. So I think there's a lot to con con take into consideration when deciding whether to speak up about this, if for no other reason not to draw attention to their own infrastructure projects and, and their own, you know, other student associations and, and federations have their own memberships to, um, whose interest to defend. So unfortunately, since what we're looking at right now is, is, is Dawson has been primarily just the first and then primarily publicly being, you know, made an example of um, by the CAC government, it, um, it, it puts us in a situation right now where we're a little bit isolated. Um, but of course, as the, as more discussion happens around what about the other infrastructure projects, the budgets being released in late March, um, you know, that, that's where the discussions are now. But no, ultimately, there's not a huge amount of support pouring out from neither the French media nor um, French colleagues. And that's, and that's partially understandable because, you know, students are, are, are as we know, across Montreal um, are experiencing these uh, space deficits at the college level. So there's a certain amount of, of wanting to protect what, um, what students have, at least in theory for the time being until the budget's announced. Um, you know, Matt, Matt, one just a small thing here. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to go against the wind when and when the wind is looking like a political vendetta. Okay, uh, it, it's 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 harder because uh, you have all the weight of the of 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 the the government now uh, going uh, against you. Uh, so so uh, how how can you convince? someone who has been told that becoming bilingual means that you're going to become anglicized, that you're going to be part of the substitution linguistique. How can you, how can you uh, reassure anybody that, no, this is not the fact. It's not because you're bilingual that uh, you're going to uh, lost you're going to lose your uh, cultural uh, identity. Uh, uh, it, got, it, it will give you access to an, another segment of the world, of course. And if you are using English because you know English, it doesn't mean that you have become an anglophone. Un tête carré, comme on pourrait dire. It, it, it sounds that sounds to me like a question we should note down for the next time we uh, have a chance to <laughs> talk with Mr. Skeet. Who is a living embodiment of uh, you know someone who graduated from Dawson College and now sits with the CAQ government? Clearly, has not lost his identity as a Quebecer nor his ability to speak French, uh, um, having actually graduated from Dawson himself. Matt, Matt, what I would like you know is that the initiative that the QCGN has taken is 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 absolutely valuable, but I would love to see QCGN. Trying to pair with an, uh, uh, with La Société Saint Jean Baptiste, let's say. All right, okay. If I if we want to push the envelope a bit, okay, uh, and organize a, a discussion around these issues, it's where both the English and the French would 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 talk together. That would be fantastic. I. I hope that, uh, that that I can I can say on behalf of QCGN we are open to talking to everybody and anybody who will listen to us about this important issue, and I hope that our our, um, our colleagues on the francophone side uh, would would be open to such a discussion. It's certainly one that the CAQ government seems to do a lot of talking and not a lot of listening. But we can just hope that uh, this wouldn't be a dialogue de sourd. Yeah, as we say now, mm -hmm. which the Mouvement Saint Jean Baptiste. I would I, I, I would not uh, have too high expectation. <laughs> Fair enough. So um, we, we've got about time for maybe one or two more very quick questions here. I've got an excellent one here from Julian, uh, which does, dovetails in a little bit to a general question concerning the rights uh, afforded to our community under the charter uh, or under the, uh, yeah, the charter and the constitution. He writes, students from English public schools are Quebec's linguistic minority, official linguistic minority, and were protected by Section 23 of the Charter. And those students 
graduating from English public schools depend on Dawson and other CEGEPs in the English side of the CEGEP network. The courts say that they are entitled to equivalent space when in secondary school. But they happen to attend CEGEP instead of uh, doing a grade 12 and 13 program as it, uh, is, is common in other provinces, which is now a loophole being exploited by this government. The Dawson situation means that, we, that they're now being squeezed out of pre-university pre education, which is a clear violation of their Section 23 rights. Julian wants to know, what, how can the Dawson community help defend these rights? And this comes along with well, okay. earlier. Well, I think, and, I think uh, what, you know, what, what okay. rights do you think might be affected? There, there's, there's, there's several aspects to the question, Matt, and uh, I think uh it's, it's clearly something that uh we 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 should we should go a little bit deeper in if if we would if we would uh, like to get all the juice out of it but, Indeed. but and i think we may need another webinar for all the let me let, let me say just one or two things okay um as i said earlier the calculation for this government is that in 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 not too much to, in not too many years this uh, extra space will not be required because the student population will go down by attrition, okay? First, so uh, it may come to the point where the, the, the numbers in English institution will be down to the point where uh, additional space will not be uh, mandatory or okay so the, the there will be no right issue on the midterm run okay secondly okay um what what dawson has been doing up till now is that to uh make sure that every single student that was admitted at dawson whether is coming from the english community or the francophone side okay they had the credential the academic credential to have a chance to success okay so there's a a, 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 a basic requirement when you're getting to higher education okay the academic record that you have to present in order to be admitted has to match the, the 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 basic criteria that you're looking for it's not because your 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 name is john smith or uh, uh, uh susan langford that uh, uh you 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 you're gonna have a free pass to uh, higher education okay you have to show so there's a there's a, a dawson has been dealing in order to give everything uh, every way possible for for anglophones to get into their community and it, into their institution and it means that it need it it means that there's a space deficit and uh advocating for the a solution that would be fair and equitable to solve that space deficit the deficit is the way that dawson has found to protect this right mm -hmm. Um, 23 from the Constitution, La Clause well, Canada. This is certainly one a possible avenue uh, and, a, and a really well thought out answer for the limited period of time that we have. Uh, I regret that um, we are now, unfortunately, out of time. And so in conclusion, a couple of things I want to do here tonight. Uh, I want to thank everybody in attendance. I want to encourage you, please, to sign the petition that we put out in the in the uh, the chat, and to to if you can and you feel comfortable doing so, share it with people in your community um, who care about the future of education in this province, and about Dawson College in particular, and about the rights of all Quebecers, Anglophone, Francophone, and everybody else to get a quality education uh, in in a public system. Uh, I want to thank uh, Richard Villon, Tim Miller, and Alexandra uh, Cardona. Uh, for being with us tonight, giving us their valuable time, and for the good people at the QCGN, uh, in particular, uh, Josh and uh, Joshua Allen and uh, Tara uh, Barbosa, 
who helped put together tonight's webinar. Um, I do believe that this th this webinar has been recorded and will be re-released. We'll make sure to uh, to post it uh, through the QCGN's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you are looking for more information about this important topic, you can find it on QCGN's website, uh, which you should be able to find pretty quickly by Googling QCGN. Um, in, and, in, and in sum, uh, I, uh, I want everybody to walk away from this remembering that um, this is but the latest challenge to Dawson College and to the, the uh, English-speaking communities of Quebec. We have survived and thrived through many, many previous challenges, and we will survive and thrive through this one as well, but we can only do so if we do it together. So. Uh, Please reach out to friends and family members who may not be informed on both sides of the supposed linguistic divide and uh, tell them what you learned tonight here tonight so that they can become informed about these important issues. Um, with that, uh, I thank you all very much for attending tonight and I wish you a very, very fine evening. Uh, I'm Matt Aronson, Secretary of the Community Group, the, the Board of the Quebec Community Groups Network. Have a good evening.